doesn't feel great to put that much pressure on a new machine. <laughs> The M2 MacBook Air has a way more powerful chip than you may realize, but it takes a bit of work to get the most out of it. If you're doing heavy, sustained workloads on the machine, the small internal heat spreader is likely the limiting factor, but for just about $10, you can fix the laptop's overheating issues. To start off, you'll need to pick up some of these. These are thermal pads and will allow the heat generated by the CPU to be transferred into the bottom panel of the laptop and then dissipated away. So you have four P5 Penelope screws. You can get a screwdriver for one of these very cheaply, or you can get a kit for electronic repair. These are the only screws you'll have to take off here, but you should keep track of them because the ones that are closer to the hinge have less threading than the ones up front. So you wanna make sure you put them back in the appropriate location. So you can see these screws that are near the hinge have a very small amount of threading, while these ones, which were towards the front of the laptop, have much more. So with the screws out, you're gonna need a way to actually lift up this bottom panel. You can use something like a little suction cup just to get a little bit of separation to try to get something underneath it. So once you get something under there and you can get a grip, you'll basically be pulling up these three sides of the panel to get the clips that are inside of here and then on here you're gonna have to pull the panel this way because of the way it attaches definitely doesn't <laughs> feel or sound very great the first time but once the connectors all along here are off you can start to pull it towards the front of the laptop And these four screws, which hook on to here, they only slide out that one direction. So you wanna make sure once you get these connectors off, so this one's right by the trackpad, and these ones are right near the ports. Once you have those uh, disconnected, you're really gonna to wanna to pull it forward to get those out from underneath the screws that hold them in place. So down here, of course, where the trackpad is, we have the battery modules. And then here is the motherboard, and the M2 chip is somewhere around here. And this battery section is also something you should really be careful with. If you hit it with a metal screwdriver or something, if you puncture it, it could cause a fire. So you should also follow battery safety, have a safe way to put this out should you cause an issue. So in order to get that heat away from here to the bottom panel, we're gonna be cutting up these thermal pads, sticking them in here. Before you try this, I think a word of caution is in order. When you're taking apart your own machines, you need to do so at your own risk. You have to be careful not to mess up any of the internal components, because while opening the machine in and of itself might not void your warranty, any damage you cause when you're inside modifying it probably isn't covered. Additionally, the mod itself could lead to some issues. While the goal here is of course to get the heat away from the M2 chip into the chassis of the computer, you can also spread it to the SSD or to the battery and that could potentially increase the wear long term. So you need to be aware of that, do so at your own risk, and really consider this carefully if you wanna to try to get the extra performance here, or if you just wanna stick with a stock machine, because as is, the base M2 is more than enough for most people. If you want something more powerful, you should probably go with the 14 inch MacBook Pro that has the M1 Pro chip. That'll probably be better for you if you're really after getting the most out of your machine. But I enjoy modding it. I intend to run this as my daily machine, so I'm gonna do it. So I have some different thicknesses of thermal pads. When you're doing this, you want a thick enough thermal pad that you have pressure and contact between the board and the back panel, but you also don't want there to be too much pressure that you could warp the panel or cause damage to the motherboard. So I'm gonna start off with this thermal pad, which is a one millimeter thermal pad. I'll see how well that makes connection, then I can adjust. I have two millimeter ones, I have one with a half millimeter, and I have half millimeter pads, so I can adjust as needed. So I'm not gonna worry about trying to remove any of the EMF shielding to get a really direct connection. I'm just gonna lay this right on top of there. Put this th first thermal pad right over here. 
going to cut down the top of the thrown pad so we aren't interfering with anything up here or the ribbon cable too much. I really don't want to bend that too much as that connects down to the track pad area. Something I look forward to is hopefully sometime later this year we should start to get some more information regarding the M2 MacBook Airs and other Apple laptops and their repair program. Because when that launched earlier this year it was just for iPhones but it should be expanding and I would love to see what Apple allows us to fix here with their own components. So let's get the panel back on there as much as we can. We want to line up these four latches. Slide it forward. Well, okay, so I can show you what happened there. I got a couple of them. You can see it bows out a little bit. So that means I didn't get all of these clips in the back here. I only got a couple of them. So I'm gonna wanna pull that back out, make sure I get all of them pressed down at once because that's obviously not great. Now we can press down on the sides here. Does take a bit of pressure. It doesn't, doesn't feel great to put that much pressure on a new machine. But once all the clips are in place, you can put back in those screws. Once again, the ones with less threading go towards the hinge. The ones with more threading go towards the trackpad. So in order to see how much the thermal pad mod actually helps out, I'm going to run Cinebench on both of these M2 MacBook Airs. This one has the thermal mod. This one does not have the thermal mod. Three, two, one. You can see already this one is up to 227 degrees on its hottest core. This one is only at 202. Now that's Fahrenheit. I know most of the time people work in Celsius. I'm just running in Fahrenheit for right now. Keeping an eye on the NAND. Some of it's up, it's at 100 Fahrenheit on here. Over here it's 106 Fahrenheit. Not a major difference either way. Battery wise, this one is two degrees hotter. Not a major difference. The keyboards are definitely getting warm now. And the underside of this one is definitely hot. I would definitely call that uncomfortably warm. This one's warm too, but not nearly as hot as the one with the thermal pad. Now that's one of the downsides of it and one of the reasons that the MacBook Airs are designed in this way, because there is a temperature threshold that you do not want the bottom of the laptop to be over, and that has been standardized. And so it can long term cause issues if it's up on your legs at a higher temperature for an extended period of time. So that's why they're designed to not just dump all the heat into the chassis, which is now what we are doing. So if you're doing this, it'd probably be a good idea to just use your laptop on a desk, not necessarily as a laptop, because it's, it's hot. It is not comfortable. If you want your laptop to run faster all the time, you should go with something with an active cooling system, that 14 inch MacBook Pro with the M1 Pro, that'll be faster. Once you consider upgrading the SSD and the RAM, it's really not that much more expensive than just the M2 Air. So I would definitely consider going with the 14 inch if you're considering getting an Air and modding it. They're still going on their last one. So this one finished at 7,605. And this one, of course, is getting one more render done. So once both of these have completed, then I will start the next one. So this one, just in that short bit of time since it's finished that test, it's cooled off a ton already. It's shown 126 on its hottest core. The difference in score here is pretty dramatic. This one got 7,605 points, while this one got 8,043 points. So now I'm going to start another test at the same time. So I went ahead and ran five 
10 minute Cinebench tests on each of the machines. And for each of the follow-up runs after the second one, I started them whenever the previous test finished, so I didn't give either machine time to cool off in between the tests. You can see the modded M2 Air stayed significantly above the score of the unmodified one. There were also points where both the CPUs were around 170 or 180 degrees Fahrenheit, where it seemed like the limiting factor in cause for throttling might not have been the thermals of the CPU package, but rather other components nearby. So let me know what you think if you would consider throwing a $10 thermal pad in your laptop to get that bit of extra performance. I know I am. I'm going to stick with the modified M2 Air, use this as my daily driver for video editing, photo editing, all that sort of stuff. But I'd definitely love to hear your thoughts in the comment section down below. Leave this video a like if you enjoyed it and subscribe to the channel for more from 9to5Mac.